It has been a violent weekend in Baltimore City. Seven people have been shot since Saturday. Two of those victims died. Now, Fox 45 News continues to follow the deadly shooting in West Baltimore that led to a car crash, leaving one man dead, two adults with gunshot wounds, and two children hurt in the crash. Police say one of those children, a two-month-old baby, is in critical condition. Fox 45's Vincent Hill broke the news last night live right here on Fox 45. He joins us now with the latest on what happened. Vincent? Yeah, Mary, one more number added to the list, despite the mayor's data saying that crime is on the way down in West Baltimore. Just a few blocks away from the Sandtown, Baltimore Safe Streets location. At some point, a gunman or multiple gunmen opened fire. And under the eye of a Baltimore police camera. And that car came to a crash when it crashed into a pole at the far end of the block. Get well balloons now fly for those inside the car. That female, adult female, has a gunshot wound and is in critical condition. Children are injured fighting for their lives. One man is dead, another recovering. Saturday shooting in the Western, the district that the mayor's gun violence reduction plan is the second deadly shooting since the mayor announced he would expand the program across the city last month. While none of us up here are, are celebrating that violence is gone in Baltimore, we are talking about a significant step in the right direction of seeing violence be reduced at this level in our most violent district. But critics questioning the data and the expansion. I'm, I'm not... I'm not saying that research is wrong, but I have a lot of trouble believing that despite the success that we've seen in the Western District, and I do believe in the program, that everything else is fine, because it's not. There isn't any instances that you know of where someone is saying, oh my God, there's so many people in the Western District, they're all over us, they you know, aren't letting us do our thing, so we're gonna move up to some place where they're not doing it. There's no evidence that that's happening. The mayor pushing back against that idea, saying that's not a way of life in Baltimore. When you have the cultural understanding in Baltimore, you know that someone that is out in Penn North, they're not moving to North and Gay. That's just not typically what happens in Baltimore. You don't go from being a East Side drug dealer to a West Side drug dealer and vice versa. Meanwhile, that search for a suspect or suspects in yesterday's shooting continues. Police are combing through video surveillance and asking anyone with information to come forward. And you can not remain anonymous. For now, we're live at BPD headquarters. Vincent Hill, Fox 45 News. Vincent, thank you. And as Vincent just mentioned, yesterday's shooting happened less than a mile away from the Safe Streets Sandtown location and just one block outside of its operating area. This is just the latest shooting we have seen near a Safe Streets location. Last May, two shootings happened within blocks of Safe Streets operations. Three people were shot steps away from a Safe Streets cookout. Days later, four people were shot near the McElderly Park location. One of those victims died. Now, Fox 45 News has been investigating the Safe Streets program for months. It is aimed at reducing gun violence, but an internal report released last year showed it's not clear just how effective the program actually is. Despite that, the mayor is asking state lawmakers for millions more dollars for it. Now, Fox 45 News has been demanding answers about how the Safe Streets program uses taxpayer dollars for months. After we threatened legal action against the city of Baltimore, we got 455 pages of Safe Streets contracts. Fox 45's Mackenzie Frost is going through all of those, and she'll keep us updated on what she finds. And you can see what we've already found on our website, foxbaltimore.com. Mayor Brandon Scott appeared on CNN this morning to talk about last night's shooting. He talked about accountability for gun violence, pointing fingers at suspects and gun manufacturers alike. How are we going to hold every single person and system responsible, from the person that pulled the trigger, the person that straw purchased or trafficked that, and trafficked that weapon into that neighborhood, from manufacturers that continue to uh, sell to folks that they know are going to uh, give guns over to other people, and those manufacturers like the ghost gun companies who are going around our gun laws. Well, this isn't the first time we have seen the mayor shift the blame to gun manufacturers. He had a similar message after a teenager was killed last week. Earlier this month, he put some of the blame on a restaurant where five teenagers were shot. Political analyst John Deedy says while the mayor's intentions are good, he needs to take more responsibility for what's happening in his city.
when I look at some of the mayor's recent comments, you know, getting angry about the shooting yesterday and blaming Popeyes for the school thing, you know, sometimes what you have to do as a leader is kind of look in the mirror and see what's looking back at you. Well, last night, Mayor Scott called on the community to step up to stop the violence in Baltimore and come forward to help police find suspects. Really, at this point, I'm talking to folks that look like me, to black men in Baltimore. I see a lot of folks trying to be acting like they're tough, but they're really weak because only weak people shoot somebody when you know children are right there. And if you harbor in that person, if that's your homeboy, if that's your, if that's your man, if that's your cousin, I don't care who it is, then you're weak too. And we need to step up and be better for ourselves. Well, we spoke with Reverend Al Hathaway on Fox 45 Morning News. He is a community leader in the Upton community where this shooting happened. He says there are community intervention programs in place right now aimed at keeping young children away from crime. He tells us there are three things the city can focus on right now to curb crime. That how do people overcome their search circumstances? There are three things that we need to do. We need to, one, work intentionally around expanding family and uh, networks. Uh, we like Thread. Thread has, a, has, a, has a, 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 a model for that. The second thing we've got to do is we have to really have real community-based schools. And the third thing that we've got to involve, we've got to involve the faith-based community. If we do those things in a very comprehensive way, we could begin to get at the root causes of this violence that we see that's happening in our young. Well, this is just the latest example of deadly violence impacting young people. 13 children and teens have been shot this year, one young victim really every other day. Three juveniles have been killed in the first month of the year. The first was 17-year-old Deja Garrison. She was shot and killed on the first day of the year. And then just days later, five Edmondson Westside High School students were shot across the street from their school at the Edmondson Village Shopping Center. 16-year-old Deontay Dorsey was killed. And last week, 15-year-old Leron Henderson was killed along Liberty Heights Avenue. And when it comes to the murder of Deontay Dorsey in Edmondson Village, police are asking the public to help them identify the suspects in these pictures. Today, the Dorsey family and their attorney, Thuru Vignaraja, called on police to make an arrest in this case. The family wants, in light of another mass shooting, in light of another murder of a teenager, in light of the 25 homicides, we don't want Deontay's name to get lost in the wave of violence. What we need is to make sure that the city and the police do their job and bring a measure of justice to this family. Now take another look at those suspects pictures on our website, foxbaltimore.com. Baltimore City State's attorney Ivan Bates now trying to tackle the city's crime crisis. He is pushing for legislation to toughen gun sentences. Ten state lawmakers are now backing his bill, including eight members of the city delegation. And here's what the bill would do. It would make the maximum sentence for misdemeanor gun possession five years across the board. Right now, the maximum penalty for people ages 18 to 20 is five years. But for people 21 and older, it's only three years in jail. Mayor Brandon Scott says he supports the plan. It makes no sense for it to be uh, five for 18 to 20 and then 21 and above. I look forward to supporting the state's attorney. I told the, his staff uh, earlier today that if they need me to come testify, I'll be there to, to work with them on it. Absolutely. Well, while the mayor has put his support behind the bill, six members of the Baltimore City delegation have not. You can see their names right here. Fox 45 News is giving you the opportunity to contact your elected leaders directly. Take out your phone and click on the QR code right there. It'll take you to our website where we have put together a list of lawmakers and you can get access to their official emails and phone numbers. Now, Fox 45 News has questioned city council members about where they stand on the bill. So far, only Felicia Porter has responded saying she supports it. We want to know what you think. Should the mayor and the city council support Ivan Bates' push to toughen gun laws? So far, 87% of voters say yes. Head to foxbaltimore.com slash vote to weigh in. I'm Mary Bubala. Thank you for watching. Here's another video for you to watch. Also take some time to subscribe to our YouTube channel.